Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to talk about the component of a vector u along a vector v. So the component of a vector u along v or the component of u in the direction of v is how we can think about it is defined to be the magnitude of u times cosine theta where theta is the angle between u and v. Let me draw a couple pictures here so we can see what's going on. So let's say I have these two vectors this is my u and this is my v. So here's my vector u. We're sharing an initial point between these two vectors. This is my vector v. Now if I draw a line from the terminal point of u to v such that there is a 90 degree angle, we say that this distance here is the component of u along v. So what we're saying is if v is on my horizontal the component of u along v is just my horizontal component. Now v can be anywhere in space, it doesn't need to be on the horizontal, but because the angle theta never changes we can always think of rotating this in a way that it's easy to see here. This is going to be the magnitude of u times cosine theta. And all we're really saying here is, if I travel from the initial point of view to the terminal point of view, how much of the vector v have I traveled in the direction of v? And we see here, once we get to the terminal point of view, we draw a line straight to v to make that 90 degree angle. This is the section of v in which we've traveled in that direction of v. Even though we've gone a further distance along u than we have in this component, this is just that part of the distance. Now, it doesn't need to be an acute angle here. We could have an obtuse angle. I could have something like a V and a U over here. So if this is my U and this is my V, then this angle between them is theta. So this theta is between pi over 2 and pi. And my component of U along V is going to be this section here. Now it's not going to be positive here. This is going to be the magnitude of u cosine theta. But here theta is between pi and pi or between pi over 2 and pi, so cosine of theta is going to be negative. The magnitude of u is always positive, so in this case we're going to get a negative component. And what that means is, let's say my negative component is negative a, that means that I've traveled a distance of a in the direction of v but in the negative direction, right? I'm traveling a distance of a along v in the negative direction, right? We know that here negatives with these vectors is just a directional uh, qualifier. Now, why magnitude of u cosine theta? Well, I already, if we think about it as the horizontal component, we know that the horizontal component of this vector u is going to be this magnitude of u cosine theta. But because I don't necessarily have a v along the horizontal, all we need to do is think, well, I have these right triangles going on here, don't I? Over here, looking at this right triangle, cosine of theta is equal to my adjacent over my uh, hypotenuse. But instead of going that direction, let's just say I multiply the numerator and denominator of cosine by magnitude of u. What we see here, this is my hypotenuse, so that means that this must be my adjacent side or my component. And the same thing's happening over here, um, only my cosine is negative instead of positive. Here, this angle is going to be theta bar. So if we do this same calculation, we're going to get the same result, except for once I plug in theta instead of theta bar, uh, it becomes a negative component instead of a positive component. Okay, so those are my components. Now let's see an application of these. A car is on a driveway that is inclined 25 degrees to the horizontal. If the car weighs 2,755 pounds, find the force required to keep it from rolling down the driveway. Now we're going to break this problem up. I have this car sitting on a driveway. Let's say here's my driveway. This is my horizontal here.
let's say this horizontal is uh, parallel to the surface of the Earth. So I have an incline of 25 degrees. So this angle right here is 25 degrees. Now I have this car, this car sitting, sitting on this drive. Okay, there's my car. And the weight is 2,755 pounds. Now weight here is going to be force in a downward direction, isn't it? Straight towards the center of the earth. This is the weight. So I have this vector, we'll call this vector W. This vector W is the force that the weight of the car is creating with gravity. Now I can draw a couple other vectors here. Let's say I draw a vector orthogonal to the drive. So I have this vector over here. I'm going to call this V. This is going to be the force experienced by the driveway from the weight of the car. Now I also have this vector over here along the driveway that ends right here. We'll call this U. Now notice I can make a box here. What does this box mean? Well we see from this box that this weight vector W is equal to the vector U plus the vector V. So what we've done is we've broken down this weight into two different vectors. One vector represents the force of the car that's being applied down the driveway. The other vector represents the force of the car being applied into the driveway or the amount of force that the driveway is absorbing. Um, the amount of force created by that weight. So we want to find the force required to keep the car from rolling down the driveway. Well the force required then is going to be whatever amount of force is being applied in this vector u, isn't it? This vector u is what's pushing it down the driveway. V is being absorbed by the driveway. It is no way contributing to this car rolling down the hill. So the force that I need is going to be whatever this magnitude of u is in the positive direction. Well my magnitude of u here, notice that u, the way that we've drawn it, u here is actually the component of w along u, isn't it? So the magnitude of this vector u is simply the component of w along u, and we know the component of w along u is the magnitude of w cosine theta where theta now is this angle right here. This is my theta. It's this angle between u and w. Now we have some kind of overlapping triangles going on here. So notice here with this incline, I have a 25 degree angle here on the left. Gravity is pulling down this car at it's pulling down this car at a vector that's orthogonal to the horizontal, isn't it? Gravity pulls directly to the center of the Earth, so the direction that gravity is acting is perpendicular to this horizontal line. So I have a 90 degree angle there. So that gives me that this angle theta then, I know that theta plus 25 degrees must equal 90 because this is a triangle here, so the interior angles must all sum to 180. So theta is going to be 90 degrees minus 25 degrees or 180 minus my right angle 90 is 90 and then minus 25. But this gives us a theta of 65 degrees. So the magnitude of u is equal to the magnitude of w which is given to us as 2755 times cosine of 65 degrees and if you plug that into your calculator we get about 1164 point three. So this is going to be 1,164.3 pounds. All right, we're measuring our force here in pounds. So I need 1,164.3 pounds of force pulling the car in this direction or blocking the car from here. And actually the way we would normally apply this is it's in the brakes. So the brakes need to be able to take 1,164.3 pounds of force to keep that car from rolling down that driveway just from its own weight and gravity. Okay, now this is a common type of problem to use these components. Um, if you don't understand it, make sure to spend some time with this problem. 
until you understand what we've done here and how we've figured out that the amount of force we need is actually only 1,100, not the entire weight of the car, which is 2,755. Okay, now we're going to move on. We actually have another way to calculate components of u along v depending on the information we're given. So let's say we're not given the angle theta, so, but we need to find the component. Well, we can use it just using the dot product. And we do that because notice that my component here, this on the left, this is my formula that we've been using for the component of u along v. Now in this next step, if we multiply the numerator and denominator by the magnitude of the vector v, we get this center step. But this top here, this magnitude of v, magnitude of u cosine theta, you should recognize this as being our dot product theorem. Remember this numerator now is just equal to the dot product of u and v. So depending on what information you're, you're given, you're going to calculate the component in a different way. If you're given the magnitude of u and the angle between u and v, we'll use this original equation that we had for the component. But if you're just given u and v in component form, we can simply use the dot product and then divide by the magnitude of v to find that component. Otherwise, we need to go through the process of calculating the magnitude of u and finding the angle theta between u and v, which it's still fine to do. It just takes us a little bit longer, so this is a simpler way to solve the problem if we're given this information about u and v. So for example, let's say that we're asked to find the component of u along v when u is the vector 4, 6 and v is the vector 3, negative 4. So to use this formula up here, I need a couple of pieces of information. I need u dot v, and I need the magnitude of v. Now u dot v here, the product of my horizontal components is 4 and 3, plus, now the product of my vertical components, 6 and negative 4. So 4 times 3 is 12. I have plus. 6 and negative 4 is negative 24, so this is going to be a total of negative 12 for my dot product. Now the magnitude of v, this is the square root of 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. This gives us the square root of 9 plus 16, or the square root of 25, which we know is equal to 5. So the component of u along v is simply my dot product, which we found to be negative 12, over my magnitude of v, which we found to be 5. And that's it. That's the component of u along v. Now in this example, we had something going on where u was going up like this. v is, uh, v is down here more. And my angle theta is greater than 90 degrees, right? So remember, whenever our angle theta is greater than 90 degrees, my component of u along v now is over here. This is my component. So I'm, the magnitude of that component is 12 fifths. So as I travel along u, I travel 12 over 5 units along v, but I'm going in the opposite direction of where v is pointing. Okay, and that's it for components for this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about projections a little bit, um, but we're not going to use that for too many problems. And in the final video, two videos from now, we're going to use these components to calculate work done. So force, distance, work, all those types of problems. So we'll see you there.